Hey, Eli, can you hear Hello. me? Hello. Hi there, friends. Um, my apologies, apologies, everyone, for the mix-up. Thank you so much for joining us in this new link. I'm now going to go to the meetup as well and just message those people directly on that side of things as well with the link for this event. Thank you so much for the best laid plans. I tested and everything was working fine and then needed to make a tweak and things went south. <laughs> I have seen that issue happen. The danger is like when you exit out, you're like, as a host, you're like, close it for me or close it for everyone are the two options. And it's super easy to make that mistake. So I'm sending that feedback to the developer because okay. that is a dangerous feature. I agree. Yes, yes, it is. Or good, just getting that out to the meetup. So yeah, in the meantime, here, I'll actually, I'm going to make you the uh, host for this, um, okay. Rebecca. Um, and then, yeah, actually, I should be in another meeting at the moment. So I'm just going to slip out in a second. All right. Thank you. But yeah, but all the best, everyone. Uh, enjoy the call. And yeah, thank you so much for your flexibility. Yes, thank you. And you're a lifesaver, Eli. So thank you. Happy to help out always. All right. Okay, and I see people are joining in. David, thank you for the insight on the URL too. Um, all of this is going to be helpful. We're transitioning from Zoom into the Bevy platform, uh, which is hosted by TechSoup, and um, we're learning as we go. So thank you. Mark, hi, I see you, Mark Smith. Hello there. Hello. Hey, Jesse Bradley, how are you? I'm doing okay. Wonderful. So. Jennifer, nice to see you. How are you doing today? Good, hello. Hello, hello. Mike, can you hear us? I can. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. Good. Wonderful. David, it's good to see you again. David Minton and David Crumlock. <laughs> Hi, David. Hi, you guys. I got a cleaner vacuuming in the background. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. You're it's probably here. Yes. Exactly. I've got a dog and a cat right now. They're not in here, but if they come through, you might hear them too. <laughs> I'm going to post an update on Facebook. I posted earlier, there were problems. So I'll, I'll post Thank that uh, they're fixed and that the link will now uh, route them to Zoom. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Mark. Um, yeah, I, as, as I was saying, I, we might have had a couple more people join in. Um, the best laid plans we're trying to transition with TechSoup to their technology and moving away from Zoom, hopefully in the future, they've got a lot of great tools in the Bevy platform that, that they're offering for us to use. Uh, but we're learning uh, how to use that system with them. And when I closed out to reset some settings, it closed out the session permanently. So um, Eli saved the day. He fixed that for us, but um, we'll, we'll know that for the future. Just giving a few more minutes for, for others to join. Jeffrey, good afternoon. How are you? I am doing well. Good, good. I know we um, have been going back and forth by email. I, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, yeah, it's not Friday, but it's all right. That's right. <laughs> Something to look forward to, though. Mm -hmm. we'll I, I have that information you requested coming. I'm okay. just trying to wordsmith my bio a little bit. I understand. And, and there's plenty of time. And if you need any um, any information from me, please let me know. I uh, sure will. Okay. Well, got a few more people joining. And... Uh, let's go ahead and get started today. Um, and, and we've we've got a, a little bit of time. We can certainly go over if uh, the conversation uh, warrants it and, and you want to stay around. Uh, if you have something planned for one o'clock, you can step out and, and no one will uh, be upset by that either. Uh, my name is Rebecca Beck and uh, we're here for NC Tech for Good. 
And today's discussion is going to be about tech challenges and tech resources. And, and this is really for you. Uh, this is uh, for us to have a moment and a platform to share with one another uh, what great uh, tools and resources we're learning about or using um, and, and to share those with each other. And, and possibly any challenges that we can discuss and, and talk through and be a bridge of support for one another. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about is uh, there was a, a recent article in BizTech Journal that talked about the five nonprofit tech trends to look out for this year. And what they found were some of the challenges that nonprofit IT has currently is integrating their online giving platforms, uh, either if they're using a CRM or some other constituent management tool. Um, nonprofits also want to expand their automation to free up resources that go it, that should be going directly to our services instead of having to uh, pay the burden of, of technology costs. Uh, AI and machine learning has come into play and uh, nonprofits are, are looking towards that to find out uh, what's best for them and how they can work in those areas and, and play with those tools. Data security, of course, cyber security is, is a constant concern for all of us. And mobile operations, especially with the pandemic and people needing to work remotely, uh, mobile operations has become um, a, a spotlight. So what I wanna know from each of you, and, and feel free to share if, if we've got a few volunteers that want to talk about what's going well in their organization or in the work that they do, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but the question that I have for this group to discuss is for those of you who have found success in addressing at least one of these trends or maybe a different trend that, that BizTech Journal didn't highlight, uh, is what tools or resources are you currently using to address that issue? And what are your future plans? How will you expand or grow that uh, from the, the success that you found? Um, and, and so I just wanted to call out that uh, generally to everyone in the group, um, if there's anything that you want to highlight that's on your mind um, that you, you've recently experienced. Are there we raise special our hand? projects? Yes, you can raise your hand or you can call out whatever feels more comfortable to you. I'm looking for the hand raising icon and I'm on a Chromebook and it doesn't it doesn't lay out the same as on, as on a regular laptop. It doesn't. So so Mark, what do you have to share with us today? Well, uh, my principal organization I've been working with is the Triad Electric Vehicle Association uh, and Electric Vehicle Advocacy Group. And uh, the and now the national organization, which is being revamped, the Electric Vehicle Association, it used to be called the Electric Auto Association. Uh, one of the major uh, trends of this year is finally enabling uh, Salesforce, uh, a CRM, uh, into the processes within the large organization. Um, we realize that we're only a very few of the chapters. Um, our chapter is is 150 people registered here in Central North Carolina. Uh, the organization uh, throughout the world is is on the order of uh, 5,500, as I recall, with uh, about 100 chapters. So there is a, a broader need and a, um, a, uh, a minimum amount of resource needed to actually begin working uh, with a CRM at the at the higher organization level, the uh, the, the uh, international level. Uh, we do need some research. We would certainly love to have um, help from somebody who's more than just dabbled in Salesforce as I have. Uh, Salesforce is, as anybody who's gotten into it, um, is a uh, very complex piece. We're using the uh, NPSP, the, the Nonprofit Success Pack, which is the thing that's that's free for nonprofits. Uh, if you haven't signed up for it, even if you're just gonna dabble in it, go sign up for it now. Um, it, it's well worth the, the time to just start playing around with it and understanding what it can do. So eventually perhaps you can do something significant with it which is what we've been doing for uh, about a year and a half, almost two years now. Um, and uh, we do have a, an instance, which uh, it looks like in the next day or two, we're gonna exceed our free <laughs> allocation of IDs and start paying for a thing at the, at the national level. Uh, but some of what we're, we're trying to do is displacing some older tools, some older listservs, um, a very loosely integrated uh, set of tooling 
um, that includes mail integration with, uh, with website and forums. Um, not clear how much of that would actually wind up in Salesforce. Uh, all of those could wind up in Salesforce, but we're really looking for that. Uh, what is the, the low hanging fruit and the killer, killer app, if you will, for uh, really getting all the chapters on board. Uh, so our experience right now, the, the really success is getting over the hump of getting people across the other chapters interested in doing this, where before they were like, show me why I need to do this. Now they're, show me what I can do with this. So that's, yes. a, that's a better place to be. Um, Mark, I have a question yeah. for you. Uh, sure. With that, that concept, with that thought, do you think the pandemic and remote work has, has spurred that interest, or is there something else that's caused people to get on board with using Salesforce that way? Well, that's part of it. Um, most of our chapters across the world are relatively small active groups, you know, dozens of people who have relied on face-to-face, -face, who most of the teams have really taken their electric vehicles out and showed people, and they've been restricted from that. And now we're getting back into probably being restricted again. So yes, that is a driving force. Uh, how do we engage with people um, who either are unaware of the capabilities of electric vehicles to displace fossil fuel powered vehicles or um, just never spent the time to actually look at them? Uh, how do we engage in a hybrid mode? So we actually have an event planned for the zoo, uh, the NC Zoo in Ashboro on October 1st. And now we're scrambling to find out how can we do this hybrid if it turns out uh, very few adults are going to come. Uh, there's some school groups who who say they will be there. Actually, I'm skeptical of that personally, uh, with the way Delta variant is going. But um, how do we engage and have perhaps we will have a remote video event and and turn into that? Some of our other chapters successfully done that. Uh, the National Drive Electric Week and uh, Drive Electric Earth Day um, happened essentially about six months apart. And last uh, the last Drive Electric Earth Day was about half and half, um, half hybrid, half online only. And it looks like this next one's gonna be the same. In fact, the prior year was all uh, virtual, uh, all of which drove a need for how do we better integrate these things uh, outside of the, the specific tooling that the Drive Electric Earth Week and the Drive Electric Earth Day guys did. So uh, um, we are trying to map processes into, into um, Salesforce, um, map teams in as opposed to every individual and anybody who's worked with Salesforce knows, yeah, there's a big difference between registering everybody into Salesforce or having most everybody be a contact in Salesforce as opposed to registered. Man, going through all that of who really needs to be, uh, who do we want to be contacts, who do we want to be involved in, and, and all the, the Salesforce uh, really puts you into the mode of, of really is built for sales and, and for nonprofits, that's not what we do. But they've done an interesting job of layering over this nonprofit success pack for, for nonprofits. So yeah. I give them credit for doing that. Still, when it comes right down to it, the model of Salesforce is you're selling something. And right. um, many nonprofits, especially these e electric vehicle guys, say, well, well, no, that's what the dealers do. We don't do that. But yeah, right. we do. We're, we're selling yeah. ideas. Yeah, we call that constituent management and revenue generating in the nonprofit world. So, <laughs> yes. But like you said, it sells in, in the for profit. So um, one, one question, if it's already published for your event, would you mind placing a link to that in sure. the chat as well? Um, I'm a member of the North Carolina Zoo and I would love to be there on that day. So Okay, it turns out it's a Friday, oh, which is not okay. the best day, but that was chosen for the school groups. Yes, yes. Well, as a homeschool parent, I can oh. do that too. So that's a well, filter. <laughs> All right, and there might be other people here that are interested or, or at least can share that event out. So thank you. Um, so, uh, and I did post a question up here. Um, Mark, you did ask about, you know, if any, anyone has any recommendations or uh, any insight as far as getting some advanced support on Salesforce. Uh, David Benton shared some information. And if anyone else has anything to share here, please do so. Uh, again, that's what we're here for. Um, does anyone else have a, a special? story to share in any new technology. Jennifer? Right, yeah, um, I thought I would um, go next um, since I'm going to talk about Slack, which is um, a product now owned by Salesforce and it seemed like a logical build. Um, 
recently I've been working with Code for America, doing some data science work in support of what they're something called revisioning, where they're revisioning their brigade network, um, which is their national network of local uh, volunteer driven um, civic tech organizations. And I also, as a volunteer, am um, leading up the reactivation of our statewide virtual um, brigade. And all of that is to say, well, why am I mentioning Slack, which I imagine is a tool that is already familiar to a lot of people on this call. Can I get a, yeah, <laughs> Slack, Love right? It. We know the yeah. ringtone. Why am I mentioning it? <laughs> Um, well, we, in, as part of this revisioning, we did a lot of qualitative data analysis um, and you know, really dug through a lot of survey responses, interview responses, and things like that. And when you're dealing with a nationwide network of local organizations, which are extremely non-standard, like a lot of nonprofits have maybe a standard model that your statewide chapter or your, your city's chapter is gonna look like this. That's not the case here. It's everything from fiscally sponsored to standalone nonprofits to from single person to hundreds of people. It's very non-standard with a complex organization to its national headquarters. And what um, something that just stuck um, in my mind after looking at that qualitative data were um, a couple of comments that people said, the pandemic made it so much better because now everyone was on Slack. Now, it wasn't actually that great. There are definitely some people who are still not on Slack and <laughs> there are definitely still communication challenges, but at least for a few people and a few issues, they actually found moving you know, maybe eliminating some of the other side channels of communication and getting the, I'd say the headquarters staff with a more regular presence on Slack was an improvement over the um, variety of communication channels that were um, leading to info overload um, early, earlier. So that is um, what I would like to share today. Wonderful, yes. and. and Please keep us updated on that as we have uh, future meetings. And you know, that, that is, it's a challenge and an asset to have a tool like Slack. Uh, I, I know that firsthand. Question. Yes. Yeah. Jennifer, question. Uh, with Slack now being part of a Salesforce mm -hmm. organization, is there any integration, special integration between Slack and Salesforce that uh, we can point to? Because I would love to get these guys on Slack and off some of those other set of tools they're using? So that's an interesting question. It's one that I don't know because I um, am not really in the business part of the, of the headquarters, which is who might consider using Salesforce. So I wouldn't, I don't really know about the integration. I do know that, you know, Salesforce has been pretty generous in offering, or well, Slack through sales after their acquisition by Salesforce has been pretty generous in offering nonprofits a temporary access to their paid version, wow. which lets you do things like um, have um, group calls just right through Slack or um, connect multiple organizations. That's got pros and cons, but for us, it allowed us to at least temporarily during the trial of the free period, we could have a statewide Slack integrated with the national Slack um, and also integrate with, we do a lot of our volunteer work through partnerships. Okay. And during the tax season, we partner, for example, with um, VITA, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. So we could you know, do integrations in uh, outside the boundaries of the organization um, to accommodate those partnerships. I, I know I didn't completely answer your question. I'm sure someone would add like Salesforce would be more than happy to, you know, talk to you what they can offer in terms of those free trials. Yeah, I'll post it on the Slack. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. 
um, would one other member like to share? I, and we've, we've got plenty of time to share others as well. I'm Maple. I gotta go in a minute, but um, I'm in I'm in groups um, that are on the ground fighting infrastructure and bad pipelines and things. So I have a meeting actually now for uh, bird dogging someone's house in D.C. who works with Biden and approves everything, even though they're saying they're trying, they're going to do better. They're really not. So anyway, um, we mostly use Facebook because it's free. You know real grassroots on the ground groups without offices. That's all they really have, you know, in general. I'm just generalizing here, but they're not 5013C. Some of them are, but they still have almost no money because not a lot of donations come in when you're against the big giant of oil that runs the globe, you know what I mean? It's hard to get even funds for um, people to take real videos or whatever. So it's shoestring and so they use the Facebook Live, which is more of a security risk. So they use pseudonyms. I'm just saying there's all kinds of nonprofits. And so that's a lot of what I see. And we just, we use it like a big chat, you know, here's this thing tomorrow, or you're gonna meet over here. And then sometimes the, the, the police are notified that way. And the police actually look at Facebook to find out what's going on. So it's a challenge and uh, to find, you know, there's nothing free. So I'm just yeah. sharing that as a uh, part of the story. Well, I will we'll point out Slack does have a free version. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, it's not secure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, Slack, Slack is secure compared, especially compared to Facebook. And yeah, well, yeah, anything. <laughs> yeah. So it would, might be a more appropriate pl platform. Sunrise Movement uses Slack. I first used it with the Bernie and the, the electoral stuff. Yeah, so Sunrise uses it, but even when they have something that they're going to, like we bird dog Sunrise, we bird dog Tillis's house a couple weeks ago on a Sunday and invaded his neighborhood and, and yelled about what he doesn't do. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't communicate the details. We went on Signal for that, which has a chat feature, that um, secure phone service thing. But yeah, you're right. Slack's a lot better than it used to be. Yeah. You can search and everything. Yeah. Thanks. And, and Maple, for the type of work that you do, Signal is probably the better option. I agree. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. And I have seen some, um, some areas where nonprofits and municipalities are using Facebook Live because their board meetings and committee meetings are public. Um, they're sharing that through Facebook Live. So, so that's a great point to, to be using that as a nonprofit um, because, like you said, nothing's free, but funds are limited. So uh, there's only so much you can do. Wonderful, thank you. Um, does anyone else like, would anyone else like to share before we move on to the next uh, topic? Bye-bye, Maple. Thank you so much. Have a great thank day. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Okay. All right, so I'm going to test this. I had this set up in Bevy, and we're going to try it here in Zoom. I don't think we're going to have a problem, but I do have a brief poll to share with you. Um, let me post that up. Oh, actually, no, that's not going to be the poll. I did make a couple of uh, copies of the links here because of the issues that uh, Eli helped me out with. So let me get the correct link for you. Share this one up. And this is a brief poll. And uh, if you have any trouble opening the link, please let me know. Uh, this is based on a philanthropy journal article called Identifying and Overcoming Common Nonprofit Challenges. And they're saying that leaders of organizations, particularly nonprofits, have a common goal of advancing their organization's mission. And to drive forward progress, it's essential that they understand where their organization sits in relation to their peers on objectives that measure great performance. And specifically, in this article, they're addressing IT performance and some concerns where those issues may be creeping up, either for the IT teams, the IT contractor, or the techie who's involved in making that work happen. Um, so if you'll open the poll, and again, let me know if you have any issues with opening the link. Um, 
and I'm going to share here on my screen the actual results. So uh, the question is, what is your primary pain point as it pertains to your role in nonprofit tech? And you've got some options here. Uh, one is network mobility. So we've got cybersecurity, communications, funding, infrastructure needs, or some other growing pains that have to deal with programs expansion or retraction of your groups, uh, either by funding or for some other reason, loss of grants, that type of thing. Um, or if it's something else that's not listed uh, in it, I'll just, just give you a few minutes to go ahead and respond to that. And just give me a little indicator, either by a raise of hands or uh, some type of other acknowledgement when you um, clicked on that poll and, and submitted your response. I'm seeing a few hands raised. Is anyone having any difficulties accessing the link? All right. I'm going to count down and please call out if you haven't submitted your answer. Three, two, one. Okay. And so the response is here. Okay. So the primary pain points of this group uh, today, we've got 50% uh, of our group reporting that communications are the biggest pain point. Um, and next in line for that, we have the funding. And I'm sure that's a big challenge for any nonprofit uh, with regard to innovation, staffing, talent retention, professional development, everything and more. Uh, and then finally, growing pains, either by expanding programs, possibly through grants or additional funding or retraction of those uh, resources. So uh, let's talk about some of those. Um, communications, would anyone like to report out uh, any of their communications challenges that they've had. Uh, and feel free to uh, raise your hand or just call out that you would like to speak. For the ones that answered communication, if you'd like to speak out and, and explain what type of communication challenges you're having. I'll just say information overload. Okay. Too many right. things, too many channels, people not keeping up. Going back again to all the survey um, data that I looked at, there were so many times where people said, nobody ever told me. And there's an equal and opposite reaction of saying, you know, I sent a million emails about this and nobody read them. Um, so both sides. Yes. Yeah. There's uh, some great research now on async communication and how in today's society email and chat are no longer working and we have to resort back to picking up the phone and having a conversation with one another um, in a perfect world jennifer what from your perspective would be a solution or at least work your team towards a better solution for all of that Um, so one of my suggestions that I don't think is getting implemented, but I, I suggested a newsletter that I informally called Brigade Leader is Supposed to Read, and the um, acronym there would be Blister. Um, which is probably not a real selling point either, but to just to put together, whether it be a weekly, bi-weekly or monthly, some type of a regular newsletter that was pruned down. So there was no fluff. It only contained those things that you really said, every brigade should have at least one leader read this and then have a commitment from every brigade leader to read at least that newsletter every whether it was week or month or whatever. Um, 
so that, because we are an organization that loves to shout out all of our wins and give people all of the, um, you know, pats on the back for everything that's great. But it, it also means that there's a lot of information floating around out there that you could miss a major change in expectations or direction. Um, because it's not clear when we've really changed one of those moving pieces. Yeah, I understand. Um, so, so more consistent information across the board through a newsletter, one directional information that makes sense. Um, does anyone else have any insight or thoughts about what Jennifer shared um, or any, even any recommendations for resources? Um, well, I think that really for that kind of a problem, uh, of information overload is a lack of a central place where you can go to get that information uh, at any time when you're ready to receive it. So something more like a, uh, a project database where you can list the status of each and every project that you guys are working on and have um, you know, those concrete information where, okay, we're shifting this project more toward the finance end or whatever, you know, you're doing. That way, it's not information being pushed to the users, but the users know where to go to get that information, and they can, at a glance, go and uh, see and look up whatever project they're most interested in or they're working on and get that information. Um, I just think it's better than pushing it out and then hoping everyone reads it because again, like you're saying, you're getting too much of that already. Yeah. And so some type of repository where they can access what they need and should make a commitment to get it. Okay. Uh, Mark, I saw your hand, David, I see you as well. Mark, um, you're next. Well, one of the challenges we have is that the bulk of our members uh, email is their preferred communication vehicle. Uh, but also they're the same ones who are complaining there's too much email coming because there's no other channel they're willing to look at that might aggregate things better. So coming up with an alternative for uh, a group largely um, grayer hair than me um, is, is a challenge. Uh, some of the other tools like we just talked about, uh, whether Salesforce has a very flexible front end, can look like whatever you want pretty much and mail integration is possible. But for things like Slack, it's really not not true and for people who say i'm comfortable with the email i'm not comfortable with one of the things they're really uncomfortable with is slack uh so that's just a non-starter for for that part of the organization and most of the leaders most of the chapter leads and the active uh movers and shakers uh just don't know what to make of of, of slack um they're they're tolerant of facebook and 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 even facebook has, has been a problem getting people to attend so jesse's comment I think is a good one. Having some agreement on where are where are certain pieces of information going to reside, and then then growing the culture for okay, we will start placing this type of communications in this place. Whatever goes in a newsletter, whatever pointers are in a newsletter, whatever repositories are set up. That's something that that we're struggling with um, as an organization globally, and and the local chapter is really kind of looking for that guidance of what should we do. Right. Yes. So it sounds like what you're saying, uh, and I, I may be paraphrasing this the wrong way, but possibly using those resources, sending out the newsletter, creating the repository, but having some type of centralized resource where everyone can access all of that information if they missed it in those other areas. Is that right? Yes. yes. And that may go back to the website. Um, I started putting up a Facebook aggregation tool. Uh, WordPress has a Facebook aggregation tool add-on. Um, we have a WordPress website and, and that's great, except now every one of those little aggregator tools costs, um, you know, that, that used to be free just a year ago, suddenly with the popularity, those guys are realizing they can make money. So now each of those little tools costs on the order of 60 to hundred bucks a year. And, exactly. and what used to be a capability we could incorporate for no extra fee above the base WordPress hosting charges. Now we're running into two to three times the hosting charges and, and most of the chapters can't do that. So that then that pushes up to, well, can we do mass hosting um, at, the, uh, at the national, the international level uh, that chapter levels, chapter members buy into? And that whole process is, is, is one that uh, is, is going to take a while. Yes, 
yeah, we have a similar situation with our organization. We're all in the smaller uh, countywide agencies, but we answer to a larger count uh, statewide. And uh, that cost sharing and that pool of resources is so helpful. But like you said, it is very time consuming and it takes a lot to get through. Uh, we just had a recent win with DocuSign. Our entire state is getting DocuSign licenses for our local chapters from the state. So there's an ability, the ability to do that. It just takes a lot of effort from all parties to get that, that happening. So uh, David, you've been very patient with your hands up. I, I know you had something to share as well. It's just more of the same that uh, I, I just feel personally email is just probably the worst way to try to communicate among large groups. Um, it, once you have people trying to have any kind of discussion, you wind up having email discussions fork and there's no way to actually kind of trace back what the discussion is and find all the different parts of it. Um, I know there's a nonprofit that I'm a volunteer for that I'm really trying to get them to adopt Slack, which is something that for other nonprofits I'm involved with are on. And for me personally, it's really easy having everything in the same place and I can just switch between the different Slack spaces. But Email is terrible, um, and it's it's just frustrating that that's that's the format that everybody says they want to use, and then just doesn't use it. Absolutely, yes. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I did have uh, one resource that I wanted to share with you, and it's um, something that that really helped me understand why email is such an issue. Like you said, it's, it's a, a burden and it, it's gotten worse um, recently with um, remote work. Uh, but there is a um, podcast called Coaching for Leaders. And uh, I believe it's episode, and I'll, I'll share this out with the group afterwards by email as well. Um, but I believe it's episode 537, How to Engage Remote Teams. And they talk about asynchronous communication and why email and chat does not work. Um, and developing a placeless mindset and how do we how, how do we bridge that communication gap um it's not going to be anything new for any of you to hear because we live that world um, facing those challenges but it's a resource that i like to share with other leaders who aren't feeling those tech pains from all of this and maybe don't understand that this is a real issue um, it may be perpetuating the problem by really forcing people to use email to communicate so so I would recommend you know, listening to that and, and sharing that, that out with your teams if, uh, if that's helpful at all. Um, so we've got a, a few people that chimed in on some of the other pain points that they have as far as funding. And, and that might be a whole, you know, all of us are sharing the same pain with that. But do you have any particular struggle that you're having in this respect um, outside of being nonprofit and not being funded at the capacity to be able to serve your community? Uh, but, but what types of, of real struggles are you having uh, for those of you who, who answered in this way? Yes, Mark? Well, um, I think it was brought before partner communications. So uh, we, we partner with um, local government organizations, non-government organizations, schools, et cetera. We, we have yet to find a platform we can communicate on other than email and eh, sometimes Facebook, um, both of which have challenges for various reasons, not the least of which is public information on Facebook um, is something that many of our members and I am reluctant to communicate details about any event um, outside of what we really want to release as a public announcement. Uh, so, so both of those have their challenges, yet they are usually the, that's the common denominator. And so coming up with a platform that is, um, is usable for these organizations that have nothing in common other than the occasional events we work with them. Yeah. That's, that's the reality of it all. And I, I wish, I wish I could say that I've heard of a success story on that, but um, I think a lot of us are facing that same struggle. Uh, does anyone have any, anything to add? add to that, that where they've seen success in uh, bridging that type of issue.
I know MailChimp says you know, all of the the mail, um, like MailChimp and 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 the others of their ilk. I, I've forgotten the other major. Cost of there. contact. <laughs> those two those two claim yeah we can solve these problems um for a fee and and we found okay yeah it helps but it really didn't solve that problem a more kind of moderated approach to communication uh that i have found that's kind of really extensible uh has grown out uh, from uh you know uh, computer gaming communities and things like that discord um uh, has a lot of moderation controls, as well as being completely free. Uh, it's more kind of like a, a, a chat forum, but they have really, really good integrations if you've got people who get really, really good at it uh, for, for doing things. Um, it does support voice communications and, and meetings, uh, you know, kind of at a default. Uh, but you can look and see who's a member and who's able to look and see this information. It's easy to invite people. There's a web version, so they don't have to go and get an application if they don't want to. Um, but again, it's just kind of uh, a communication platform where you can send people. So, okay, look, we're going to talk about this type of subject over here and then again you can follow the conversation because it's more in a forum based uh communication uh standard and then if you want to have like a you know a, a voice chat you know once a week or whatever at a specific time you can do that and anyone who is you know logged in at that time can then join but again it's, it's not out there publicly where anyone who just clicks on Facebook can see what you're saying, they have to actually be a member of your Discord server. It's called Discord. Okay, I've, I've heard of Discord before. Okay, thank you. Okay. And, and one thing to add about Discord, if you're in the education space, your leaders are going to be more apt to want to adopt Discord than Slack because Discord might not be as scary to them. Their students are using it and, and some of the teachers in those uh, schools are using it. So. Okay, does anyone else have anything to share specifically with uh, lack of funding or uh, maybe how you're gathering funding uh, to work on a shoestring budget and uh, deal with some of these technology issues? All right, um, so the next thing that we had here um, on the poll, and I turned off the poll on your side, I can still see the answers and you may be able to see them from your screen as well if you still have the, uh, the poll up, um, is the last pain point that uh, the res respondents uh, put on here was growing pains, either through program ex expansion or retraction. Uh, would you like to share a special story on that to whomever answered uh, that that response? Yes, Mark. So growing pains is, is uh, especially with our uh, really reintegration with our, our parent organization. Prior to COVID, um, I'd say only a handful of the folks who actually were in leadership roles really knew anything about the parent organization. Uh, now all all of our members are very well aware of the parent organization, so that's a good thing. Uh, the downside is then came the expectation that somehow the, the parent organization was going to help us grow and help us um, deal with the 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 lack of our primary way of of interacting with the the people we're trying to interact with. You know, the lack of face to face, and and that didn't happen. And, and I think there was a big disappointment from a lot of chapters who thought somehow the parent organization was going to lead everybody and, and have a hybrid solution that would work right out of the box and, and be able to help them engage where they, they really couldn't use their, their default model. Uh, we stumbled. And I, I think we've, we've recovered a little bit, but mostly it was just, okay, the one thing the parent organization did was open up, uh, they had a... Um, 
a, an organization-wide Zoom license. And they open it up to all the chapters. Most of the chapters, if they were using Zoom, they were using the free Zoom, which means they couldn't host a webinar style. It, it, it had to be the, the, you know, the free meeting, which has what, 50, 45 minute limit, I think. Uh, so that was the one major change where suddenly each of those, each of the chapters could actually host a webinar style event if they wished to. So that's the one major win. Um, there were a lot of other requests, but that's the one major win. That's a huge win. Yes. Yes. And I, I don't know about you and I, I don't know if your chapters are experiencing this now, but Zoom has become so prevalent that even uh, in regular meeting scheduling, uh, people are asking, can you just send me a Zoom link? And, and expecting you to have the Zoom uh, access to be able to, to have that meeting with them. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, our regular meeting is scheduled to end at one o'clock. We've got about five minutes left. Um, are there any particular topics that you'd like discuss, to discuss or any uh, particular issue that you'd like to bring to the group uh, to request advice or support for? Uh, and, and I'm opening this up to the entire group if you want to raise your hands or uh, do the digital uh, little handprint, either way. Well, so hoping somebody else to go first. Oh, you're fine, Mark. I, I don't see anyone raising their hand, but uh, we'll get to everyone who does. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, there was a, um, Jesse talked on uh, one thing that, that, or Jeffrey, I'm sorry, uh, talked on one thing that, that we hadn't thought about Discord. If there were a, either a Slack instance or some other forum for our own organization, for this organization, NC Tech for Good, I think that would be very valuable. Uh, I completely some, agree. Discord, I don't, don't really care but one where uh, we could poke each other for expertise regionally. I love that idea. And I've been thinking it along those lines too, Mark. Um, and, and I wanna poll this group because that's a great question. You led into uh, something that we can uh, certainly implement. Um, and, and just by a show of hands, how many of you, uh, because we are in the tech space and, and it's uh, well known, how many, many of you would uh, support uh, accessing a Slack channel for shared resources, knowledge, uh, general discussion as needed with the group. Yeah, okay. I'm seeing a lot of hands. So uh, absolutely look for that in the near future. I'm going to uh, talk with Jean and Judy, who unfortunately could not be here today, but uh, they're part of our planning group as well as David. Um, and, and we will uh, put that together and, and get that back out to everyone. I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I participate in a few other Slack channels um, that are similar to that, where uh, we're discussing. Uh, one of those is uh, North Carolina Women Leaders in Technology. And uh, you just pop out a question to that group, and they very quickly respond back with uh, either resources or advice or, or just a, 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 a gentle ear uh, to sound off with. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that recommendation. Okay. Is there anything else any, anyone would like to share in the group here? Yeah, I'm seeing from Jennifer, she uh, posted in the chat that Copra America lunch again. also did this. Uh, yes, Mark? <laughs> we want to have lunch with people again. Or, or yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, we've talked about hopefully a, an event in the future uh, where we can all come together in person again. Uh, we've got to get through all of this, uh, this lockdown and, and uh, changes and, and, and make sure that we can all come together in a healthy and, and safe way. But uh, definitely that's on our minds. Uh, we need to, to uh, look, look towards the future to do that together. Wonderful. Okay, well, uh, like I said, yeah, I, know, I know this team is, is used to having Judy and, and Jean here to, to guide us and support us. Uh, both of them could not be here today, and, and we miss them. I'll, I'll send them our well wishes, and they'll definitely get a, a copy of this recording. Uh, so they'll know that, that we had a good conversation, and, and they were not forgotten. Um, so uh, if any of you have any questions or want to reach out uh, before we put this Slack channel together, uh, please feel free to email the NC Tech for Good, um, and, and we'll, uh, one of us will respond to you. Uh, we're all getting those messages now. And, and we'll reply back and, and hopefully get you the answer that you, you need. Um, our next meeting is in September. Um, 
and we'll be talking about some of these things. I have a presentation planned for you um, specifically on what IT leadership and technology looks like coming out of this pandemic and some of the lessons we've learned through that. And I'm looking for a, a really good conversation with everyone that's in attendance about how we move forward with innovation and uh, some of the changes that we've made, how we let go of some of the things that weren't working for us when we started with the pandemic and have not really helped us during the pandemic. And then some things that we've adopted that we continue to keep um, even after all of this is over. So I look forward to seeing you all there. Uh, that day is September 16th at the same time at noon. And, and then we have a special guest coming in October uh, as well as in November. And, and please keep an eye out in your emails uh, for invitations from uh, TechSoup Connect on those special events. Uh, we have Pierre Kwan, who is a software developer and a CEO of People on the Go. And he'll be guiding us through some, uh, not only some mindfulness in the roles that we do and, and the work that we have, but also some guidance in, in tech leadership and, and uh, just our, our roles in, in nonprofits. Um, and then we also have possibly, uh, Jeffrey, is it okay if I share? Uh, Jeffrey will, will be leading us in a session on security very soon. So, uh, so we've got a lot of exciting events coming up between now and December. So um, I look forward to see, seeing each one of you again very soon. And thank you so much for coming today. Bye-bye. Have a great afternoon. Thanks so much, Jennifer. I got your message. I look forward to talking with you.